Hey mamas, happy Mental Health Monday today. I am Carrie Biscalonis with Reset Brain and Body. So today we are talking about mom guilt. Um, comment, like, if you've ever experienced mom guilt. So I know for me, mom guilt comes up a ton when I just feel like I don't have enough to give to my kids. Um, some of you know a little bit of my story with my six-month-old, Ellis, but he was born in the middle of the pandemic, although it seems like where is the middle of the pandemic, right? <laughs> but he was born in April, and what I thought was going to be my maternity leave was not because my three-year-old was at home, my husband was at home. It was a gift to have everyone home, but at the same time, I felt like I was robbed a bit of that maternity leave. And because of that, I have had to wrestle with the mom guilt, the guilt of, did I do enough? Was I there and enough? Have I created a strong enough bond with him? I went back to work earlier than I intended. I got childcare for him and all earlier than I did with my firstborn. So myself, <laughs> I am one of the people that needs to be able to look at mom guilt differently. And I'm hoping that I can provide you guys the tools with that I have been practicing myself and managing mom guilt. So first of all, the thing about guilt, and this is mom guilt or any type of guilt, is that guilt is an interpretation. Guilt is not a real emotion. It is an interpretation. So what does that mean? It means typically guilt is stemming from a story that we tell ourselves. So when I work with clients and most of our practitioners, when they work there with clients, we're talking about belief systems. What does the client have inside of them as far as beliefs, messages, experiences, traumas that then have exacerbated different thoughts and behaviors in their life, habits, things like that. So one of the most pervasive thoughts is I am not enough. I would say 98% of my clients, male, female, teenagers, whatever the spectrum, the thought that is really overriding most actions and beliefs is that I am not enough. And so when we think about mom guilt and we think about that overwhelming feeling that we get, that dread, that thing that drives us to put our needs last, it is an interpretation. And typically it is an interpretation based on a story that I am not enough. So when we talk about mom guilt, we have to start to peel back the layers a little bit to get underneath the surface to say, okay, where is this coming from? Because if guilt is not a real emotion and guilt typically is an interpretation derived from a story, well, then we have to understand the story. I was working with a client today who is a caregiver. That's just who she is. If anyone knows Enneagram, <laughs> she is a type two. And so she's naturally very giving. And she is dealing with taking care of elderly parents. So not little kids, but aging parents, which is a whole other chapter of being, I guess, going through the life cycle, right? With loved ones is that you're a caregiver at a different port, part of your life too. So she said, well, I'm the one that takes care of everyone. That's just, that's just what I do. I'm a woman and I was raised as a woman that that's what you do right? Like that story of I'm a woman, the woman takes care of everyone. I imagine there's a lot of you that could have been raised in traditional families in which that was very much the expectation. Maybe in your marriage right now, that's still the expectation. I'm the mom, I'm the woman, I'm the one that takes care of everyone. It's stories, experiences, beliefs like that that drive the guilt. So in recognizing our mom guilt, we have to peel back the layers. And the first thing I do is I ask clients, okay, what belief system, what has told you that you need to do it all? Where did that come from? Is it someone's voice in your head? Is it a message that you've seen? Is it comparison? So that we can start to really investigate where this is coming from. And the point of that then is to dismantle it. To then say, oh, okay, yeah, actually, I recognize that a lot of my behaviors have been driven because 
this is the relationship I saw my mom and my dad in. Or because um, I look on social media and all these moms are doing everything and they're taking their kids to the zoo and they're doing Pinterest crafts and somehow they're still working full time and I feel like I should be doing that too. Or they're comparing to their most closest friends, their siblings, or the type of mom their mom was and they want to be just as good or even better. Again, we're talking about stories. I'd be curious, some of you, if you don't mind commenting, what stories have you been told? Where did they come from in regarding to your role as a mom and everything that you should be doing? I like to tell clients a lot that you can't should on yourself, or at least try not to should on yourself. To me, it's adding a little humor into <laughs> something that we do all too often. We should on ourselves. So again, we have to investigate the stories of where the mom guilt comes from. Maybe we had a traumatic experience in which we said, well, I need to be, I need to be better. I need to do better. I need to rise up. I need to prove that I can do this. Maybe it comes out of a place of insecurity. I've never felt really good at many things, but at least I can feel good at being a mom. So that must, I, must mean I must do everything for everyone. Maybe it's an obligation an expectation, but we have to get curious because again, guilt is not an emotion, it's an interpretation. So one of the other things just to do in the moment when we're noticing our mom guilt is to practice an acronym called RAIN. So this is a really common mindfulness acronym and it's really easy to use. And when I think about RAIN, I'm like, <laughs> the, the way for I remember it is like, oh gosh, it feels like everything's just coming down on me. Like when it rains, it pours, right? That feeling of overwhelm. That feeling of overwhelm is then what creates that impetus in me to say, whoa, okay, rain. So first R, recognize. What is going on? What am I feeling? I name it. I label it. Oh, Ooh, I'm feeling guilt. I'm feeling it in my chest. I'm feeling what I perceive as guilt right? I'm feeling really stressed. I notice it in my shoulders. I'm feeling really anxious. I feel it in my stomach. I'm really mad. I can tell because my fists are clenched or my jaw is really tight. I have a headache. Ooh, what am I, what am I piling on? What sort of pressures am I piling on? All right, so recognize, name, label it. What does it feel like in your, in your body? So the second part of brain is A, allow allow to the experience to come in so often we say nope not right now can't feel this can't deal with it i'm too busy i want to avoid it i want to push it away it's uncomfortable <laughs> right <laughs> and so we have to allow the experience to come in okay Whew. an emotion lasts 90 seconds see it as a wave passing through you all right 90 second waves so allow it to come in sit with it examine it and then we investigate, I recognize, allow, investigate. Okay, where is this coming from? Why am I feeling this way? Man, was I just scrolling and I got all down on myself because I didn't go to an orchard this weekend when everyone else did and I stayed inside and watched movies because it was cozy and crummy out? Hmm. Wow, should I be homeschooling my kids too? Should I not be sending them back to school? I feel really guilty about the decision, but I really need this time and I really need a break and my kids need socialization and I feel really overwhelmed and stressed. And... <sighs> Investigate. Where is it coming from? What triggered it? Give yourself the compassion to investigate and the time and the grace to allow yourself to do it. So often, again, we're just on autopilot. We run, 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 and we wonder by the end of the day, we're like, ugh. I'm exhausted, I need a glass of wine. Well, how many times did we let the emotion come in and then just stay because we buried it versus being able to move through it because of this practice? We recognize, we allow, we investigate. Okay, so let's say the mom guilt comes up because someone else's three-year-old is going to school and they're getting socialization and they must be so happy, but they're wearing a mask and you don't know if that's the right thing or not. But in your heart, it kind of feels like maybe it's not the right thing for your kid, but maybe it's good for other kids, but then maybe you should be doing it, right? <laughs> you feel the spiral that's happening. So we investigate and then we nurture. What do I need? Okay, I'm recognizing where this is coming from. You know what's funny? I'm just a little moment. As I was doing that spiral, 
this fist clenched up so hard, right? I'm just telling a story right now. I'm recounting an experience and I noticed the physical reaction happening in that moment. That's so powerful to recognize how these emotions impact our body. Okay, so nurture. What do I need? Okay, maybe I just need to shake it off. <laughs> Literally shaking it off is super helpful and can be really therapeutic. And I recommend people to shake it off often. Ugh. Okay, I'm just going to shake it off. Or, you know, what? I think I just need to take a break. I need to take, I'm going to go outside. Or, wow, you know what? I do feel like I'm missing my kids a little bit. And I want to go give them a hug. I'm just going to give them a squeeze. I'm going to hop off this conference call and I'm going to just go give them a hug and a kiss. Or, you know what, I think because I don't want to waste time in the kitchen tonight away from my kids, let's just order pizza because I want to spend more time with them. Or, wow, I haven't done anything for myself in 14 days or seven months, and I am going to buy the Peloton app, and I'm going to start doing workouts in the morning. Oh, you know what, I need to sleep in. My baby has not been sleeping through the night, and I really need to just nurture myself and sleep in. Maybe it's just in that moment, like... I just need to take a couple deep breaths or I need to yell and scream because I'm angry and I'm frustrated. Nurture. What do I need? So again, to recap, guilt is not a real emotion. It's an interpretation. What is the story? What are we perceiving in that moment? Then we go through the rain exercise. Okay. All right. So I'm feeling mom guilt. Cool. Name it, label it. Where is it feeling in the body? Allow it to happen. Investigate it. Why is this happening? Where is this coming from? What triggered it? And then nurture. What do I need? So you may not always have the time and the space to do this exercise when you're feeling these emotions. That's okay. You might notice you react. A lot of times when we're feeling an emotion and we don't have the time and space to actually work through it in the moment, and again, this can take 90 seconds, all right? So I'm not saying like go journal for 25 minutes. <laughs> 90 seconds you can whip through this exercise. That's what practicing mindfulness is, right? Being able to step back and observe without reacting. But let's say you do react. Okay, so you react. You lash out. You get defensive. You make an impulsive decision. You start crying. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, the awesome thing is, is that you can reset. Just like your kids, you can reset too. We're resilient. Okay, so I didn't react the best way that I wanted to. All right, I'll do better later. Give yourself the opportunity to reflect. Huh, I wonder why that happened. How can I do better next time? And don't beat yourself up because if we beat ourselves up, then the cycle continues. We go back to the thoughts of I am not good enough. I need to do better. I should be doing more. So don't you dare recycle. We try not to repress. We try not to recycle. We try to release. And this RAIN exercise is a perfect way in releasing the guilt or whatever emotion comes up. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you. Great exercise. I'll be sharing this. I think we all need to reset often lately. Yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> all the time. We can reset entire years of our life, right? We can reset moment to moment. We can reset day to day. But this is a mindful way of doing it as often as you want throughout the day. Next week, we're going to dig into some of the heavy stuff, the stuff that we don't like to talk about. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into our stories and really talk about shame. So stay tuned. Come back next week because, again, it's the stories, it's the perception that drives the emotion. So next week, we're going to dig in. Bring a journal if you want to bring it so we can do some really good immersive work. Thank you everyone for your time. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.